Well, there is great power in the church being together today. Isn't that right? There's great power in this. There's great significance in us teaming up together in the backyard kids camps and in our Awana ministry. Many of your faces I see you because we serve together in the Awana program and we'll see each other a lot this week. People in the community, I don't know about you, but they're curious. Do you find people curious when they talk about our churches teaming up together? And we say, we're doing this together. And they're like, that's great. (laughs) And you know, that ought to be probably normal, but it's not always been so normal, right? And this is a great, great thing that we're partnering together. But there's something very significant that we're united around. And we're going to look at that today from the Gospel of John, chapter 17. We're going to take a look at what Jesus was praying for his followers and then also for us. Now, what's so special about this chapter is that we get to lean in and listen to Jesus praying. Isn't that precious? And he prays something very, very special. So we're going to jump in and look at verse 18 to begin with from John chapter 17. Let's look at this first verse together. Jesus is praying and he said, Just as you sent me into the world, he's talking to God his Father, he said, I'm sending them into the world. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. Isn't it wonderful that what unifies us together is the Lord Jesus Christ? He brings us together. And he was a holy sacrifice. And God sent him into the world. And then he prayed for his followers there about sending them also into the world. And what's great is now we're doing the same. Through our backyard kids camps together, We are going out into our local area, serving our Lord together. And it's so great that we get to be a part of the fulfillment of his prayer. But we are, he is the unified factor. The the unifying factor behind all that we're doing. I'm curious, before I move on and continue to teach through this passage, uh, do I have any, any CFL fans in the group? Yeah? All right. I see some of you. Okay. All right. Very good. Are you Stampeders fans? Yeah? All right. All right. Good. So I know that there tends to be some Edmonton fans in the room. We love you too. Yeah? What about the NFL? Are there any NFL? Do you like to catch a little of the NFL? Oh, wow. Major stand-up in the back. Awesome. That's cool. All right. So there was a coach uh, from an NFL team. His name was uh, Herman Edwards. Very colorful and witty. What's so interesting about Coach Edwards is that he was actually uh, traded to the team as a coach for a draft pick. I'd never heard of that before, but this coach, he said this. He said, the players that play on this football team, it was the Kansas City Chiefs, he said, they're going to play for the name on the side of the helmet, not the name on the back of the jerseys. And you know, we have a name on the side of our helmet, right? Right? As we go out in the world today, as we go out into Cochrane and serve in backyard kids camps, I love what Debbie and Leanne and Stacy said. They said, let us tell you about our churches when the lady talked about it, right? Isn't that great? He is our reason for being together. It's he and his kingdom that we're doing this together. No, it's not normal that one church would actually close its doors, its building on one morning and come and join together in another one. But it's great because we're here in his name. It's not about the alliance on the back of our jerseys or Bow Valley on the back of our jerseys. It's about him. It's about him. Isn't that right? Now, yeah. Let's look at what Jesus prays next, shall we? He said, I'm praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. Look at that. He prayed over time for us, for us. He looked out over time and prayed for us. And he has a very specific prayer that he's getting ready to pray here as we look at it. And we, 
we can be the answer to his prayer. Let's take a look at what Jesus prays next. I pray that they will be one, just as you and I are one. He's talking about he and the Father. As you are in me, Father, and I am am in you, and may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. I've given them the glory you gave me so they may be one as we are one. I'm in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. There is one word that he kept using over and over again. It's the word one. It was his prayer that we would be one. That we would be one. You see that over and over again. And I believe this is his message for us today. You know, we could spend the time talking about well, what's the difference between the Alliance denomination, the CNBC, Canadian National Baptist, or we could talk about the other 40,000 different denominations, Christian denominations there are in the world today, and they get added to every year. But why would we do that? We have our Savior. We have the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think those of us that share the same common core beliefs can say, let's move forward together. (laughs) Isn't that right? And we can answer Jesus' prayer. We can be the fulfillment of Jesus' prayer. And I'm thinking, wow, I want to do that. So I'm going to give you a few ways for us to do that. Here's the first point. It's unity in what we say. Unity in what we say. There was an officer that attended a tea and then a special program that was being presented and the commanding general of his base was delivering a message. And so this officer, a young lieutenant, he kind of leaned over and he grumbled to the woman that was sitting next to him and he said, what a pompous and an unbearable old windbag that speaker is. And the woman turned to him, and she was red in the face and full of rage. And she said, excuse me, lieutenant, do you have any idea who I am? He's like, no, no, ma'am, I don't. She said, I'm the wife of the man you just called an old windbag. (laughs) Oh, said the lieutenant. He said, do you know who I am? She's like, no. And he's like, good. (laughs) 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 <laughs> he, he disappeared off into the crowd. <laughs> Our words really do mean something. You know, we live in a small enough community that what we say about one another is incredibly important, isn't it? It's so important that if someone happens to say to us something to us, Bow Valley family, if something happens to say to us about the Cochrane Alliance Church, we should say to them back, Isn't that great what they're doing? I am praying for their success. And if something says to you, someone says something to you, Cochran Alliance Church, about that Bow Valley Church, and they say, do you know what they're doing? And you say, yeah, and I'm so for them. I'm so hoping it goes great for them. Our words are so important in our unity. Absolutely they are. You know, there was a a statue of Christ years ago that was placed between Chile and Argentina. It was called Christ of the Andes. This major monument was put between them as a sign of their two countries being unified and working together. But you know what? The Chileans began to realize something. They looked up at that big statue of Christ, and they were given the backside of Christ. And they were actually getting very upset about that. And well, there was a writer for one of the Chilean newspapers, he realized what was going on, and he wrote an article, and he said, well, you know why it's that way, don't you? He said, it's because the Argentinians need a lot more watching over than the Chileans. (laughs) And you know what? Everyone's anger softened, and it smoothed out. Our words are very powerful. Look at this passage of Scripture and how we ought to speak about one another. May the words of my mouth And the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. We should make this as the words for our unity. Let me give you a couple other things that we can pray about for one another. We not only want unity in what we say, we want unity in what we pray. Look at these things that you and I can pray for one another. We should be about praying for each other. Look at this first one. 
Here it is, the first point. Yes, I'm believing by faith. There it is, that, <laughs> that God will build the house and have his way here. Shouldn't we pray that for each other? From Psalm 127, look at this second one from Psalm 127. God will keep, guard, and protect his work. Shouldn't we pray that? The idea of a watchman, that's the idea in this passage. We should pray that. Look at this next one. It's an entire passage of scripture that we should pray for believers. We should pray for one another that we would understand the incredible greatness of God's power. Wouldn't it be something if our churches would pray for one another? That Bow Valley folks would say, God, I pray that the people in Cochrane Alliance Church would understand the greatness of your power. What would happen through two churches that would begin to pray for one another diligently? Can you fathom what God would do? I've made a commitment now. Every morning when I drive by to work, it's about six to eight degrees and I'm on my motorcycle and I'm feeling it. I drive right by your church, and I must drive by your church facility two, three, or four times a day. I began to make it a practice now in the last few weeks. I said, God, would you bless them? I said, God, would you protect Pastor Jason? Would you bless his leadership? What would God do if we would pray for one another like that? If our churches would say, we're going to do that together. Well, not only should we have unity in what we say, unity in what we pray, we should have unity along the way. You're going to see three tenors behind me. The Atlantic Monthly wrote an article about these three guys when they got together. But there, was, there was one of the press agents that was really pushing on uh, Placido Domingo. He said, well, aren't you jealous or aren't you upset that they got this line and they kept pressing one another, looking for competition between them and trying to really raise this competitive spirit? And Placido Domingo said this. He said, you have to put all of your concentration into opening your heart to the music. You can't be rivals when you're together making music. Isn't that good? It's in our human nature to be competitive. It's certainly in mine. I'll just tell you right now. It is in my nature to be competitive. But I, wanna, I don't want to feel a sense of competition with you. And I have in my notes here, God forgive me. How... How is it that in my own sinful nature that I can feel a sense of competition with you? Bow Valley Baptist, Cochrane Alliance. And so I say, God, forgive me. What my prayer is that as we go along the way, that God will see us so for one another. So for one another. Here's a scripture. As we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. Notice what it says. And especially to those who are in the household of faith. I am praying that when you, Cocker Alliance, will meet someone from Bow Valley Baptist, you will reach such, meet such a servant heart amongst us. And that our desire will be just to bless you, to encourage you, to strengthen you, and to be a part of your team. I'm praying the same for your family towards us. I think that we'll fulfill Jesus' prayer in this. Lastly, I just want to say we want to have unity at the end of the day. At the end of the day, there is such significance such significance in us being together. Look at this passage. May they experience, as Jesus is praying here, may they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Do you see what's underneath that passage? Eternity for the people around us, the nearly 80 to 85% of people in Cochrane, their eternity is on the line here. Do you see that in that passage? How we are unified and going together shows them that God sent Jesus. And as we're unified in him and moving forward into him, it speaks volumes, volumes to this community. Does it not? Absolutely, absolutely it does. Well, let me show you a picture. This is a big ship. I think the teams are going to be coming up now. In the 1600s, the king of Sweden was Gustav Adolf II. He was considered one of the great military strategists of his age. And he had in his vision the biggest, baddest warship that would ever be. And so he said, let's build the Vasa. 
It had 68 guns on the side. There was no other ship like it. This ship to the top of the mast was 150 feet tall. In his day, there was nothing like it. That's nearly 15 stories high. This ship was amazing. Well, on August 10th, 1628, the crowds of Stockholm, they gathered around to watch this ship set sail. And look at this. Within 30 minutes, the Vasa was going down. Do you know why? They forgot the main thing. Ships are supposed to float. (laughs) Can you imagine that the engineering and everything that went into this boat, and they forgot to think about the weight and what it was going to hold, and it went 30 minutes out and began bloop, bloop, bloop. A ship is supposed to float. What is the body of Christ supposed to do? To answer the prayer of our Lord Jesus, we are to walk in oneness and unity together. When we have the same core beliefs like we do, we are to be one. And there is such power in this oneness and our being together. I am so great that your pastor and I are friends. I am so great that our churches are partnering together in in, in backyard kids camp this week and in Awana like we do every year. I believe that in our oneness and continuing to move together, we will be a greater and a greater testimony to this community. There is incredible power in us being together. Can we pray together? Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for inspiring the words of Jesus and allowing us to see them today and us being able to lean in and listen to him pray. And God, I I think that each one of us in the room here would say to you, God, we don't want to have a spirit of competition amongst, amongst one another. Lord Jesus, we want to answer your prayer. May we be one. May we experience this same completeness together as you experienced with your Father. That's the idea of what we're talking about. And so, God, would your spirit work so powerfully amongst us? God, would you work so powerfully as we serve together in this community? God, would you work so powerfully through our volunteers that have joined us from the South? God, would you use each one of us? God, would your word spread powerfully through this community? There are so many people lost without the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're asking, Father, that you would work and move. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.